In July 2022, the Reserve Bank of Australia increased Australia's cash rate by 50 basis points to 1.35%. After every Reserve Bank cash rate decision, whether the cash rate goes up, down, or stays the same, the RBA governor puts out a statement explaining why they did what they did, their rationale and their thinking, and also their expectations for what might happen in the future in terms of Australia's growth, global growth, inflation, unemployment, and other key economic variables. So if you look at the statement for July, you can see here that it starts out by saying at the meeting today, the RBA board decided to increase the cash rate by 50 basis points to 1.35%. Global inflation is high. So really setting the picture that it's not just Australia that is experiencing rising inflation. Rising inflation in 2022 is a global phenomenon. And you can see here that why is it happening? COVID related disrup disruptions to supply chains. So here we can go over here and we're saying, okay, there is a challenge in terms of supply and that we know from our economic theory that if we get a reduction in supply, that that is going to lead to higher prices. So here we can say that along with that, we've got the war in Ukraine, which is putting pressure on productive capacity. So here, when we talk about this idea of productive capacity, and I'll just put this over here, what we're really talking about is aggregate supply, total supply. We've got global supply chain disruptions, the war in Ukraine, the overall picture is making it really difficult for aggregate supply to be where it needs in terms of what the world economy is looking for, which is putting pressure, upward pressure on prices. So you can see here monetary policy is responding to this higher inflation so that central banks around the world are doing what the RBA is doing and they are increasing their equivalent of the cash rates, but it will be some time yet before inflation returns to target in most countries. If we're thinking specifically about Australia here, we're looking here in terms of Australia's target, that Australia's target is for inflation to be two to three percent over the course of the business cycle. So not like in one quarter or two quarters, but really looking at kind of a trend and in thinking about core inflation as well, not just the headline number. So if we then look at, okay, so what is happening specifically with Australia, that the RBA is saying that yes, Australian inflation is high, but not as high as in other countries. So this can be useful in terms of discussing this in a short answer or an essay response and saying that yes, Australia has inflationary challenges, but it is not on the scale of some of the inflation that is experienced by other nations. Global factors account for much of the increase in inflation in Australia. So I'll just put a little asterisk, or let's say we'll say two asterisks here. So in terms of this, we can put this over here and we're thinking, okay, so in terms of Australia's inflation is due to cost push. So those factors outside of that and not so much demand pull, but domestic factors are also playing a role. So here they're saying cost push, yes, that is a major impact. And there is some domestic, which is demand pull. But as you can see from these ticks here, hopefully that's pretty visible, that the RBA is saying that if we're looking at what is accounting for Australia's inflationary pressures, the main part of it in 2022, cost push. Strong demand, a tight labour market and capacity constraints in some sectors are contributing to the upward pressure on prices. So these here... Let's put a different color pen here. We can look at this red. So we're looking at here, if you need to go into sort of like the domestic factors, that these are the domestic factors. Strong demand, aggregate demand, tight labor market and capacity constraints. So the inability to kind of produce what's required or to get things where they need to be. All of those are domestic factors that are leading to higher inflation. Here we can say that inflation is forecast to peak later this year. So later this year, so 2022, I think that's an important point to talk about is that here, so that the RBA is forecasting that the growth in prices will peak in 2022 and then it will decline back towards that 2 to 3% range, which we talked about there. And here we can see why will that happen? Okay, well, supply side problems ease, commodity prices fall, 
inflation is expected to moderate. So we're seeing those global factors ease up. So again, if you're talking about inflation in 2022, you can say that the RBA tips that inflation will peak in 2022 because these global factors are going to be happening. Higher interest rates will also help. Um, I think that this point I really like here, just put this in green, where it says medium term inflation expectations remain well anchored. So one of the causes of inflation is inflationary expectations, that if people think prices will go up, they will act in a way that will lead prices to go up. What the RBA is saying is that people expect that inflation won't go up by as much because they are increasing the cash rate. They are anchoring or setting a basis or a limit for consumers' expectations for inflation. So just one more time, when we are saying inflation expectations remain well anchored, what we're saying is that the RBA is showing people that inflation is going to stay during this range because they are moving the cash rate. So I'll just put there that people think inflation will be lower because the cash rate and then the interest rates are moving up and that will reduce inflationary expectations leading to higher inflation as well. So let's move on here. The Australian economy remains resilient and the labour market is tighter than it has been for some time. The unemployment rate was steady at 3.9% in May, the lowest rate in almost 50 years. What a great statistic to include in terms of discussing the Australian economy. Because if you think about it, if unemployment is at its lowest level in 50 years, then that's pushing upward pressure on wages because firms are looking for workers. There aren't a lot of workers out there. So for firms to keep their existing workers or to poach workers from other firms, they're going to need to offer higher wages. So that could be something to talk about here. Underemployment has also fallen significantly. For here, I would suggest you have the stats to look up what the underemployment rate has fallen from and to, to be able to demonstrate that. Um, the bank's business liaison program. So what this means here is that the RBA has a program where they speak directly with banks. Sorry. <laughs> the RBA has a program where they speak directly with firms to be like, what's going on in your industry? What's taking place? What's happening? Continue to point to a lift in wages growth as firms compete for staff in the tight labor market. So what we were talking about there. So what we could put here as a point to think about is that the really low levels of unemployment are putting upward pressure on wages. That's an effect that's happening there. So if we look at the other part of the statement here, it's saying one source of ongoing uncertainty about the economic outlook is the behavior of household spending. So here that household budgets are under pressure from higher prices and higher interest rates. Housing prices have also declined. What we're talking about here on this side is sort of looking at the aggregate demand, the domestic level of demand here. And it's particularly saying that we're not quite sure what is going to happen to levels of consumption in the economy because household budgets are under pressure from the higher prices, inflation, and also the higher interest rates which will reduce people's disposable incomes. So here we're saying, what is going to happen to consumption? And the questions we're asking here is very much about, okay, so if prices are going up, P just symbol for prices, and they've got an increase in interest rates they're also facing here, what we're trying to figure out is what will happen to people's disposable incomes. Because if people stop spending, then that will reduce the level of economic activity. So the RBA is saying, we're gonna be looking very closely at how households respond to the changes in the cash rate and the changes in the interest rate. And you can say here, you can see here, the board will be paying close attention to these various influences as it assesses the appropriate setting of monetary policy. Because if you think about it, if the RBA is raising the cash rate, but consumption is decreasing enormously, they're gonna to have to think about, are we getting the balance right in terms of 
raising the cash rate to slow inflation versus really giving a big shock to economic growth that could result in much slower levels of growth for the economy. It's a tricky balance, particularly because there is that lag of six to 18 months between a change in the cash rate and seeing those more complete effects throughout the economy. So if we go here, you can see here, and I think that this is an interesting point to include in discussions about monetary policy and macro policy, is that the board will also be paying close attention to the global outlook clouded by the war in Ukraine and its effect on prices for energy and agricultural commodities. There are ongoing uncertainties related to COVID, particularly in China. So these are global factors that could reduce Australia's economic growth. What we're also talking about in this last paragraph here, I'll just shift it because it's a little bit of a different perspective, that here we're saying that the withdrawal of the extraordinary monetary support that was put in place to help ensure the Australian economy against the worst possible effects of the pandemic. What the RBA is talking about here is that they are reducing some of their activity that they put in place to try and support the Australian economy during the worst of the pandemic through 2020 and 2021. That here we're saying that the resilience of the economy and the higher inflation mean that this extraordinary support is no longer needed. And I'll just change pens again because I think this point is really important. The process of normalizing monetary conditions. So that here, what it's saying is that during the worst of the pandemic through 2020 and 2021, that we had a very low cash rate. And the RBA is saying here is don't expect that. We're going back to more normal levels of the cash rate and therefore interest rates because circumstances have changed. That here, that the board will be guided by the incoming data and the board's assessment of the outlook for inflation and the labor market. This statement is really, really useful in unpacking why the RBA took the action it did, so being able to explain the increase in the cash rate in July, but then also thinking about what are all the challenges out there for the Australian economy? What are the things that macroeconomic policy is going to need to deal with? In terms of what you should watch now, I'm gonna suggest this video over here to further your understanding of economic theory. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments. And thank you very much for watching.